My friends and I were in Short North for dinner. We walked and commented on girls with sweeping maxi skirts and impressive heels. The arches glowed and the area was relaxed. While walking down one street, we noticed an immediate change. For a few blocks, the houses were dilapidated and trash was on the ground. There was a man hunched over on the sidewalk. Sitting on the corner, he was unresponsive to people walking by. My friends and I moved closer together, and there was an uncomfortable silence. Then we left the uncared for neighborhood and came across another refined area. Here there were people laughing with bags going into boutiques, yet I couldn't stop thinking about that extreme change. I wanted to know how this class line could occur so immediately and so closely, and why I felt unsafe in just those two blocks. This dramatic change in that same neighborhood got me thinking about what the challenges of gentrification are. So, what is gentrification? Gentrifying a neighborhood is the process of transforming an area from a low value to a high value community. This process strives to make that area more refined. We encourage and promote the idea of surging ahead. We strive for a higher standard of living. But what are the consequences? What and who are we leaving behind? And can the process of gentrification help everyone? Many areas in downtown Columbus experience gentrification. Streets like Neal Avenue and areas like Short North were gentrified. Many people believe this process helps the communities living in there, but do they actually only attempt to only help the new group of people moving in? Generated negativity towards the lower income community can lead to gentrification. Studies show that neglected urban areas have higher crime and insufficient public services. While these studies are oversimplified, they do encourage the idea that these areas are unsafe. Because of this, some people applaud the fact that an uncared for neighborhood is being cleaned up. But, but negativity can lead to the second challenge of gentrification, displacement. This transformation is a horrific situation for the low-income families. Studies also show that gentrification can occur on a small or a large scale. Individuals can slowly populate an area, or a class of bankers, real estate developers, and investors can drive gentrification. The families with deep roots in that area are at the mercy of these costs. Some of the families are frightened. Some worry that their identity will be lost in the process of being forced out. And most are pushed out of the neighborhoods. If the families do manage to stay, they are faced with conflict. Some in the new group that come from gentrification fear and later resent the low-income community, the reason being they're not on the same equal footing as them. Flag Wars, a documentary in Columbus, Ohio, shows the gentrification process here. In this documentary, there's a real estate agent who lives and works in a neighborhood downtown. She helps increase complaints and housing codes to reduce low-income residents. Linda Mitchell is a lower-income woman in that neighborhood. She is faced with these complaints, but because of her limited resources, she is unable to make the improvements to her home. This leads to animosity between the two groups, which leads to the last challenge of gentrification the separation of people. The higher cost of living from an increase in rent, taxes, and property values prohibits lower income families from affording the gentrified neighborhood. They lose essential ties to the community because of the higher cost of living. But not only are their groups forced out, their groups rejected. On the corner of Neal Avenue and Goodale, there's the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The church was established in 1996, so the Ethiopian population did not fully go through gentrification. But because they are an immigrant population, they are not able to afford the gentrified neighborhoods. I'm Ethiopian, so this specific issue is more personal to me. I'm able to see the intimate consequences that come after gentrification. Now, I'm not opposed to the theory of gentrification, but the concept doesn't show what happens in reality. We sometimes forget that the beauty of an area being renovated means marginalizing a specific group of people. Now, 
Some people concerned about gentrification consider the bigger picture. Sustainable, equitable, economic growth in the whole country to help all classes is a solution. But I want to think smaller. I believe that we as a community should work towards being more aware. Awareness is an action of the mind and we are all interlinked. If we are willing to help others that are different than us, we can help communities on a larger scale. One teacher that I have deep admiration for worked, with, worked in a cooperative effort in Albany, New York. His group, CRLP, worked with the Albany Housing Authority to gentrify that neighborhood. The idea was to revitalize a target area in downtown Albany. They encouraged and emphasized the benefits of a diverse community and a variety of socioeconomic groups. The developers were not allowed to take control of entire blocks, but individual buildings. CRLP and HA primarily focused on rehabilitating the lower income homes for the lower income families. They sold the homes, but not the land to the families, and the land was kept in a community land trust. I believe this process can also work in Columbus, Ohio. We as individuals can help our community through many avenues. We can use our bodies to help renovate the lower income neighborhoods. We can vote on issues to, to help the lower income families. Above all, we should try to remember people like that man sitting on the corner. Remember to communicate with those different from you. That way we can embrace, discover, and fully understand each other. Thank you.